morning, Cornerstone family and friends. It's great to have you today. It's hard to believe that we've already reached December. It's been quite a year. A lot of things have taken place over the course of the year. Even right now, we're kind of waiting here in British Columbia to see what the public health order will be following December 7th, and if we can resume services or if we still have to be online for a while. Nonetheless, we just want you to know that we are praying for each of you and uh, trust that God is working in your life and helping you during this time. I know many people are kind of thinking about Christmas and what that means this year. And I just want to encourage you to connect and uh, share your life where you can. Be a, a light out there in some capacity. It's all about trying to make a difference in our world, isn't it? Even though we're in kind of the conditions we are with uh, COVID-19, we're still trying to make impact into people's lives. Uh, specifically our friendships, our connections, and all those things that are so important during um, the challenge of COVID-19. Well, this morning I want to continue on on the topic of building you and uh, looking at the topic of hope and peace. Now, I know typically over Christmas, a lot of times people look at the Advent and they look at the candles and all those kind of things over the years of uh, the significance of Christ's birth and the, the days leading up to that. And I thought I would talk about hope and peace. I think it's kind of fitting to where we are at this hour. Um, we are finding that there are a lot of people struggling. Uh, sometimes even during the month of December is a, a tough month for a lot of people. Uh, but hope and peace is one of those things that we all really crave for and desire in our lives. Um, what is hope? Is hope just wishful thinking? I hope I win a million dollars. I, I hope that things will go well. I hope everything's going to turn out all right. Is it just based on chance? Is it just based on circumstance? Is it fate? Uh, is it one of those things you cross your fingers, hope to? Um, in the Merriam-Webster dictionary.com, it says to cherish a desire with anticipation is really what the meaning of hope is. To want something to happen or to be true. Uh, hopes for a promotion, hoping for the best. A feeling of trust or a desire with expectation to obtain a fulfillment. Is it just looking on the bright side of life or is it seeing the challenges as really opportunities? In uh, psychologytoday.com, Sean Grover on October 31st of 2020 wrote three traits that breed hopelessness and five ways to create hope. The three traits that destroy is one, extreme thinking. Those are those topics of like um, always, never, good, bad, right, wrong, hero, villain, uh, you tend to divide the world into extremes and ruminate on the negatives. You tend to label others who are different uh, to you and sometimes those who disagree with you. Secondly, resignation. You're convinced that nothing will ever change. And as a result, you become very cynical. Rather than take action, you tend to blame and you complain and then you resign to a hopeless outlook. And thirdly, isolation where you shut out the world and you live in seclusion. And one of the challenges with that hopeless idea in our present stage is that so many people have isolated and secluded themselves due to the concerns of COVID. And so our anxiety has a potential for increasing. And the moment you step out the door to leave home, there's a, almost a concern or a worry that, oh, what am I going to face? you begin to have a, a greater distrust. Uh, it spikes and, and depression can go on the rise as well. It's really important during this time that you still try to manage some connection and some capacity. How do we create hope? Goes on to say, well, one, engagement with others. To a degree, we are limited from being inside homes, but we can still go out and meet people, go for a walk, keep our, our distance at this point to ensure safety for one another. Acts of service. How can we still reach out and help people around us? Thirdly, humor. You know, laughter is really a good medicine. Fourthly, self-reflect and prayer. Some people meditate just to take that time to spend time with just where are you at and, and get a grasp of that. Fifthly, determination. Decide the person you want to be and redirect your thoughts and actions in that direction. You know, a lot of times we feel like we get so stuck that we can't move, but it really takes just one step at a time to begin the shift and to change attitudes, thoughts, and actions. So why is hope so important? In hopegrows.net, they said, hope helps us to find what we want in our futures 
and is part of the self-narrative about our lives we all have running inside of ourselves. Hope is not just optimism, it is specific and it's focused. There are many people who associate hope with often a dire situation and they hope to get out of difficult circumstances. And what hope does, it actually links our past, our present and our future. Hope has helped a lot of people actually to move out of even positions of uh, poverty and ruin in their life to rebuild and come back to a place of success. There's lots of good quotes out there concerning hope. Uh, Dale Carnegie said, most of the most important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. Tom Bodet said, they say a person needs just three things to be truly happy in this world, someone to love, something to do, and something to hope for. Richard Evans points out, it's often the darkest skies that we see the brightest stars. Christopher Reeve, that uh, famous actor who played Superman said, once you choose hope, anything's possible. And Martin Luther King Jr. stated, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. You know, finding hope is one of those things that most people struggle for, they desire for, there's a drive for. Dr. Karen Hall in her comments of uh, April 19th, 2015, in psychologytoday.com said, first of all, find a clear path. Write down some steps for what a desired change would be in your life. Make it clear, understand what you're gonna be doing. Secondly, look for role models who have found solutions. But there's so much uh, information available to us online. We can look at stories and find the support of people who've gone through difficult things. I know that um, I've had a few friends that have gone through cancer and I know that they have found uh, various places online that have been hope support groups and, and connection groups in order to help you get through some of the difficult hours that you're going through. Thirdly, do what you know you can do. And that's really overcoming the inertia of helplessness. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I can't do this, I can't fix it, I can't change it, and you feel like giving up and you're helpless, but do what you can and know what you can do. Fourthly, perform an act of kindness. And that can amazingly impact your mood and your outlook. In fact, they have uh, looked at, in research, they found that kindness often contributes to the triggering of the release of serotonin, which has really an antidepressant effect and it calms stress in your life and it even can reduce pain. Try to stop judging yourself and be kind to yourself. Kindness is so important, not only for others, but also for ourselves. Fifthly, turn to your faith. It can be a strong ally in holding on to hope. And sixthly, practice being mindful while doing acts of kindness in your everyday life. Focus your attention on the here and the now so that you're able to find more peace and less stress. I'm, a, I'm really a, a firm believer in looking at what is today bring and what can I do to contribute to my day? How can I impact people's lives around me? What is the challenge of the day that I can face it and work towards it? There's a lot of great scriptures on hope as well. 1 Peter 1, 3 to 6 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Psalm 33:20 reminds us, we wait and hope for the Lord, for he is our hope, our help, and our shield. Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. You know, a lot of people do struggle in the realm of depression, and I, I've often used this scripture just to encourage people that, you know, when your hope feels like it's been deferred or put to the side or, or neglected or forgotten, you can feel like you're just ruined and, and things are going bad and horrible. And when fulfillment comes to your hope, your spirit is lifted and you feel like moving forward. Isaiah 40, 31, well-known scripture says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. 
And I love how Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, God is interested in our well-being and he realizes the significance of hope in our lives. There's challenges that comes, there's obstacles that come, but with that, there's an opportunity to rise above those things and have a hope for better, hope for accomplishment, hope for uh, meet, meeting those challenges head on and, and getting rid of the things that are obstacles in our life. The second thing that I wanna talk a little bit today is about peace. So what does peace mean to people? Well, a lot of people, when they think about peace, they think about the absence of wars in the world. Uh, they don't want to be afraid for their personal safety. It's a place of no fear, a place where it's total contentment, no strife, warmth, and acceptance. There are just a few thoughts that are out there. Uh, sometimes when my family will say, well, what do you want for your birthday or Christmas? I'll say, well, I, I want world peace. <laughs> and it's kind of one of those things, well, we can't give you that. Uh, I wish we all could, but uh, as long as we're down here, we'll have disruptions and we'll have disagreements, and hopefully the world will be smart enough not to enter into things too quickly that will cause great harm to everybody. In the dictionary Cambridge.org, it says the state of being interrupted or annoyed by worry, problems, noise, or unwanted action. In vocabulary.com, it says peace is a stress-free state of security and calmness that comes when there is no fighting or war, everything coexisting in perfect harmony and freedom. And the Bible talks about factors that can create strife, animosity towards others, a divided heart, slave to things that destroy your lives, which is often, as we see in scriptures, referred to as sin, and even worry and danger can disrupt our peace. Dr. Rick Hansen writes, what is your sense of peace? In his article of November 9th, 2016 in Psychology Today, he says, peace of ease. What is peace? And he, he refers to four different kinds. The peace of ease, the place of relaxation and relief. It's like looking out a window, talking through a problem with a friend. Those are the positions of a peace of ease. You know, you're just in a place where you're comfortable, you can discuss, you can talk, you can just take some time to reflect at the surroundings around you regather your thoughts, and be at, be at a place of peace and stillness. Secondly, a peace of tranquility. This is where it's really deep quiet in mind and body. Your first place of waking sometimes is that kind of a state of mind. You, even before the mind really kicks in, it's just like you've just woken up, you're just kind of like it's tranquility, it's peaceful, nothing's, nothing's going wrong. Um, it can also be a place of meditation where you just quiet your life and you quiet the surroundings and, and you block out everything. A lot of people, we're so bombarded with information and, and media, social media, that every time we turn around, there's a text and there's a ding and there's a, a ring. <laughs> and, and sometimes you need to just put stuff aside so that you can just have a place for yourself so it can be nice and quiet. The third thing that he refers to is a piece of awareness. This is similar to an open space in which sights and sounds and thoughts and feelings, they arise and disappear. And sometimes when you're just thinking and meditating and pondering things, sometimes you can be in a place where it's not necessarily that you're putting point A to point B, but you're just taking in all the things that are happening and you're processing and you're thinking through, but it's a place of being aware and you're considering options and you're considering things, how they affect and integrate into that realm of peace as you're working through things. And fourthly, the peace of what's unchanging. You know, things that don't change often are reliable. And that can, that can really give a sense of peacefulness. A lot of times life is like waves where events will come and they'll go. And uh, we're reminded in scripture that the peace of God will help. And it, it will help us to, even though we don't understand the situation and go through, it's the peace of God that passes all our understanding. He just gives us that sense of his presence, that he is with us and helping us. Peace of what's unchanging. When it comes to different quotes I've come across, uh, Bernie Siegel said, love and peace of mind do protect us. They allow us to overcome the problems that life hands us. They teach us to survive, to live now, and to have the courage to confront each day. John F. Kennedy, former president of the United States said, peace is a daily, a weekly, a monthly process, gradually changing opinions, slowly eroding old barriers, 
and quietly building new structures. Eleanor Roosevelt said, it isn't enough to talk about peace, one must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it, one must work at it. And it's some very good truth there because it, in a lot of times the strifes and the situations that do come in life, they do require our investment of time and energy to, to work them through, think them through, act them through in order to see that place of settling and peace. Marvin Gaye said, if you cannot find peace within yourself, you will never find it anywhere else. There's a lot of people that feel like they're always on that hamster wheel of life. It just continually turns and spins. Where do you stop? Where do you take the time to find peace? If you are finding that you're always searching for peace, but you never find peace, even internally, in your mind, in your spirit, if you find like you're always on the go, but you're never at peace, if you're always trying to find something that will hopefully fill the peace uh, vacuum, uh, but you're never finding that, it, it just, it will drive you. And so a lot of times people have forgotten that beautiful thing of just stopping the world around you for a second by just withdrawing enough, taking a deep breath, thinking through, working through, acting through, planning through to discover where peace can be in your life. Dr. Brian Robinson gave 10 Life Lessons for Peace of Mind and Body in his article of March 2nd of this year. He said, it's found in psychologytoday.com as well. I came across several articles this week that really were encouraging as I, as I looked at hope and peace. Make the best of what happens. This is his first point. Make the best of what happens. What can you learn to become a stronger person? Now we know that not every event in life is a great moment. This past few weeks, I've gone through a, a, a trial of um, concern and uh, worry for my son as he had pancreatitis and then had to go through surgery. That whole journey of surgery, if you've gone through it, you know that you have a time of um, probably apprehension and, and fear because you're going into a surgery. And then also the pain of recovery and getting back up on your feet. So it causes a lot of disruption in your life. But you have to make the best of what happens on your day to day. You can't always control the circumstance of life, but you can make the best of it. Secondly, think with your heart. And when I say that, you know, we are a logical group of people. We think through, we evaluate, we assess things. Um, I know that uh, a lot of times in my, my science background, I often look at the null hypothesis and you kind of consider, well, does this work to that? And what's the facts and what's the data? Uh, and I put that all together in my process of logic. I, I look at my pros, my cons, uh, the investigation to figure out how to do that. In science, when we do labs, we're doing scientific methods to see if we can replicate and follow through. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at, even as we're going through COVID right now and, and looking at the different um, vaccines that are coming to the forefront and looking at the MR, mRNA kind of uh, options and, and just seeing what is being done and looking at the science behind it. And it's, uh, there's some very great things that are coming forward and uh, hopefully we'll see some, you know, some great answers here shortly. But logic is an important part of our mind, but there's also a part of our heart and our heart has this ability to sometimes be kind of aware, if I can, just a, a sense of awareness. Um, and, and sometimes we have to take a moment to listen to our heart. Thirdly, forgive someone for your sake. Forgive someone for your sake. Harboring resentments retains pain and it focuses on negativity in your life. And if you can't forgive, you'll find that it just stirs you and winds you up and it consumes your energy. And I just wanna encourage you, forgive someone for your sake. Fourthly, exercise. You know, the remedy for stress, clarity, and success has often been found by putting some exercise into action in your personal life. And one person said, if you can't make time for exercise, you'll have to make time for illness. It's kind of a, a hard thought to consider. Fifthly, find your inner sanctuary. Where is your place for retreat and quietness? Where do you go to just stop the world? Is it in your car? Is it in a room where you can just close the door and everybody stays out for a bit? Um, where is your place? Is it going for a walk in, in nature? Uh, where do you find that place for that inner sanctuary where you can spend time and, and just take a look at the peace dynamic in your life, in your mind and your body? 
Sixthly, affirm your tall comings. Notice I didn't say shortcomings, but your tall comings. Acknowledge your positive qualities. You know, we're so quick to point out our shortcomings, the things that we fail at, the things that we don't do well. But it's important to acknowledge the things that you do well. It's important that you look at, hey, these things bring satisfaction and contentment in my life. These things contribute to other, uh, other people around me. It's, it's beneficial. Seventhly, curb your perfectionism. Be the, path, be the best possible version of yourself without driving yourself completely squirrely trying to be perfect. I have never met a perfect person. Never. I've, I've seen some great people who've accomplished a lot of things and they've spent hours, hours, hours. I often look at a musician. Being professional takes 10,000 hours. Well, you're not perfect in the first hour. You're not perfect in the first hundred. You're not perfect in the first thousand. You know, there's a lot of hours when you stop and think of how many hours goes into building your talent. But be the best person, the best possible version of yourself. Eighthly, never give up on your dreams. Thomas Edison said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. Ninthly, schedule time for awe. And this is a place for meditation, prayer. All those things tend to neutralize the stress hormones in our life. And lastly, he says, honor your battle scars. Ernest Hemingway wrote, the world breaks everyone, and afterward, some are strong at the broken place. Sometimes we need to take the time to nurture those places inside of us, even that have gone through the battles, and to recall the strength and the, the peace that has been won and worked through in our lives. The Bible again reminds us in Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 9, 6, as we look at Christmas season, for, I, for to us a child is born, to us a son, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and I love this part, Prince of Peace. God wants to come into your life and bring peace into your life. We're reminded of that. Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11 says, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Folks, I pray that as you go through this week, that you'll be reminded that God desires to bring hope and peace in your life. There are things that can be attained. They can be put into action. And I just want to encourage you to take time to reflect and think about some of the thoughts I've shared with you today. That you take the, the strength of, of your accomplishments, the victories of your past wins, uh, and bring those into focus if you're struggling through things today. And remember that God wants to enable you and help you to live with hope and his peace. Let's pray. God, thank you that you love each one of us. You know where we're at in life. You know the struggles we face. You know the difficulties and the challenges. But thank you today that you want to give us hope and peace. I pray that as we enter into this beautiful month of December, that you would encourage people around and help us, Lord, in, in taking time to just reflect on the hope and the peace that you offer to us so that we can be strengthened in the inner man, the inner mind, the inner heart. And Lord, that we can walk in that hope and peace that you offer. Give us your strength this week. Help us to make a difference not only in our lives, but the lives we're in contact with. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. I trust you have a great week. I'm praying for you that you would have hope and peace. Take care.